Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I got engaged without meeting his family. Now they've destroyed everything a month before our wedding. I met my ex-fiance in my senior year of college and we continued dating after graduation. A year later, he proposed to me, and I said yes. Looking back, I should have waited at least three to four years before accepting his proposal. I hadn't met his family, and he hadn't met mine. We hadn't even spoken to any of them. Since we were going to get married, he took me to meet his family. Honestly, I was still very young and unprepared for what was to come. I could tell his family didn't like me much, but we were all putting up a facade. I hadn't done anything wrong to offend them. I talked to my fiancé about it. But he said he had spoken to his mother, and she loved me. I wondered if I had misread the vibe. At least he had spoken to my family a few times on video calls, so when we went up to meet them, they were happy and welcoming. My fiancé thought so too. We set up a meeting for both of our families to meet, but it didn't go well. After the meetup, my mom pulled me aside and confirmed my suspicions. She asked if I was sure I wanted to marry him, and if anything were to happen, would he stand by me no matter what? I thought he would, but I was hesitant. There were so many red flags that I should have noticed by then. My fiance's view of the meeting was completely different. It was as if he was purposefully ignoring what was right in front of him. He told me that his mother said it was great and that his family loved us. At this point, I could see his mother's influence on him, but I didn't think much about it. I told my family what he had said, and my father told me to be careful, as he was worried about me. I assured him there was nothing to worry about and that everything was fine. That was me ignoring yet another red flag. It seems the red flag needed to be set on fire for me to notice it, and soon enough it was. We were back at my fiance's family's place, and nobody would talk to me. I made an effort on my part. I tried talking to his sister, hoping she would respond, but that quickly went down the drain. She rolled her eyes at me, made an uninterested noise, and walked off to her boyfriend. Yes, her boyfriend was there, and everyone seemed to talk to him, even though they had only been dating for a few months. I was about to marry their son, but they didn't care. I felt hurt and disappointed. I needed a break from them, so I talked to my fiance about it. He tried to include me in their activities, but they continued to exclude me. He wasn't very understanding and told me I should try harder. I told him I was doing my best, but they simply didn't like me. We had a fight that day. I told him I wanted to leave and that talking to him wasn't helping either. I was ready to pack up and leave on my own, thinking I could use my vacation days better like being at the beach instead of with these people. He eventually calmed down and convinced me to give it another try. The next few days were rough and even my fiancé started acting strange. When I asked him what was wrong, he got snarky, saying things like, I know what's on your mind and I can see who you're looking at. I was confused and asked him what he was talking about but he just made a weird face and walked out. At this point, I was regretting my decision to come here and reconsidering the proposal. My parents' warnings kept echoing in my mind. I decided I would talk to him after we left. A few days later, after we left, he apologized. He said he had just been feeling off and that my inability to get along with his family upset him. I told him he couldn't put the blame entirely on me. I had made a great effort bringing gifts, trying to talk to them every day, even though they ignored me. It was ridiculous, and I shouldn't have had to go through it. I reminded him that my family welcomed him with open arms and he seemed to feel guilty. He said he understood and would try to ease the tension between me and his family. His family visited him two or three more times. We didn't live together, which was a relief. At least I didn't have to see them all the time. I would visit him at his apartment when they were there, but I would always decline his requests to stay. I didn't want to bring that negative energy to work. He assured me they would eventually warm up to me, saying they were just overprotective because he was their only son and the youngest. He said they didn't hate me, they just had trouble expressing themselves. I was bothered by this, but I chose to believe him. We were planning a small ceremony with close family and friends. It wasn't going to be anything fancy since we were both freshly out of college and had only been working for about two years. My parents had offered to help us out, but I declined. With just a month left before our wedding, things seemed peaceful when his family wasn't visiting or interfering, we were fine. Then one day, he called me out of the blue and said his family had surprised him with a visit and they wanted to talk to me. He asked me to come over immediately. I was surprised but thought maybe they were finally trying to get to know me, now that the wedding was so close. I went over, and his entire family was there his mother, father, sister, and her boyfriend. I was a little nervous, but they actually talked to me, and I was happy about that. My fiance asked me to stay over, and I thought, why not everything went well, and two days later they left. I had stayed over for one night, so I didn't know what happened in the next two days. My fiance hadn't called, and I was busy with work, so I only texted him. He didn't reply, and I assumed he was just busy with his family. Soon, he texted me saying they had left and that he wanted to meet up. I went over to his place, tried to kiss him, 
and said I missed him, but he pushed me away. I was confused and asked if he was okay. He looked me straight in the face and said he was breaking up with me, completely expressionless. I stood there, shocked, barely inside the apartment. I asked, what he coldly told me to give back the ring and leave. I couldn't believe it our wedding was just a month away, and two days ago, everything seemed fine. My eyes welled up with tears. I asked him why and what had happened. He told me I should know and accused me of trying to seduce his sister's boyfriend that night while everyone was sleeping. I was horrified. I told him I had done no such thing, but he didn't believe me. He said his mother had seen it happen, and his sister's boyfriend had confirmed it. I begged him to call them, but he started yelling at me, calling me terrible names, and said none of them wanted to see my face ever again. He yanked the ring off my finger and pushed me out of his apartment, telling me never to contact him again. I was teary-eyed but still in shock. I took deep breaths and somehow made it to my car. I called my dad, crying and explaining what had happened. He was furious and told me he was coming immediately. My mom got on the phone and tried to calm me down. She told me to take an Uber home because she didn't want me driving. I didn't want to leave my car there because I never wanted to return. I sat in my car for about an hour, talking to my parents, before I finally calmed down enough to drive home. I called my best friend when I got home, and she came over to comfort me. She never liked him and called him a mama's boy. She told me that if he really loved me, he would have believed me. She said I deserved better and called him trash. I agreed. Over the next few days, I forced myself to go to work, but my best friend stayed with me in the evenings. She even stayed over for a few nights. I blocked and deleted his number. He had hurt me deeply, and I wanted him out of my life. Update. Time passed, and four months later, I went to stay with my parents. The day I was supposed to get married was tough, and I had a small meltdown, but my family was there for me. About five months after the breakup, my best friend asked me to move in with her to her brother's apartment. He didn't use it much, and we wouldn't have to pay rent, as he needed someone to take care of it. I was all for it, and ten days later, I moved out. Her brother's apartment was in a fancy building, and living there rent-free with my best friend was the best thing to happen to me in months. When we were younger, I had a crush on her brother, but he was eight years older and never noticed. I hadn't seen him in years, but a few months after moving in, I felt like myself again, and I had fully moved on from my ex. Then, her brother came back. I'm not going to lie, he was very attractive. One night, after clubbing, I drunkenly confessed my crush on him. He just laughed and asked if I was ready for our date. We did go out, and two months later, we were officially dating. One day, after work, I was waiting for my boyfriend to pick me up, and suddenly, my ex showed up. He tried to touch my hand, but I pulled away. I didn't want him near me. He had caused enough pain. He started apologizing and told me he now believed I was innocent. His sister's boyfriend had confessed that nothing had happened. Apparently, his mother and sister had planned it all. My ex said he had confronted them and made them confess. I told him it didn't matter. I told him to leave me alone because we didn't know each other anymore. At that moment, my boyfriend pulled up and I walked over to him. He kissed me and asked how my day was. My ex called out to me, but I turned around and told him I had moved on. And he should too. We got in the car and left. Over the next few days, my ex showed up at my workplace again, begging me to talk to him. I told him I wasn't interested and asked him to leave me alone. He kept asking if we could start over, but I told him it was too late. I reminded him that he had accused me of cheating, sided with his family, and called me terrible names. The fact that I was still being polite was more than he deserved. Update. Hi, guys. I all keep saying you want an update, so here it is. One month later, my boyfriend confronted my ex, and after a heated conversation, my ex finally got the message. He hasn't shown up since. About six months into our relationship, he surprised me by taking me on a trip to the mountains. It was something I'd always wanted to do, and he planned everything down to the smallest detail. We hiked, watched the sunrise, and even went horseback riding. It was magical, and for the first time in a long time, I felt completely at peace. I realized that I had truly moved on and was happier than I had ever been. My best friend has been incredibly supportive of our relationship. She always jokes about how it took me long enough to realize her brother was the right guy for me. Living with her has been a blast. We've grown even closer, and it's comforting to have someone who knows me so well around all the time. As for my ex, I occasionally hear bits and pieces about him through mutual friends, but I've completely blocked him on social media and have no contact with him. From what I've heard, he's still very much under the thumb of his mother and sister. I sometimes feel a little sorry for him, but then I remember how he treated me, and any sympathy quickly fades. He made his bed, and now he has to lie in it. My career has also been going well. Shortly after the breakup, I got a promotion at work, and I've been thriving ever since. It's amazing how removing toxic people from your life can create space for good things to flow in. I've been working on myself a lot, too. Therapy has helped me process the trauma of my past relationships, 
and I've learned to set boundaries that protect my mental and emotional well-being. I realized that everything I went through, as painful as it was, shaped me into a stronger, more resilient person. I know now what I deserve in a relationship and what I will never tolerate again. My self-worth doesn't depend on anyone else, and I'm proud of the person I've become. The experience also taught me a lot about red flags in relationships and the importance of trusting my instincts. When something feels off, it probably is, and ignoring those feelings only leads to more pain down the road. I'm more in tune with myself now, and I won't hesitate to walk away from situations that don't serve me. As I write this, I'm in a much better place. I'm with someone who genuinely cares about me. My friendships are stronger than ever, and I'm more confident in my own skin. The pain of the past is still there but it no longer defines me. I've moved forward and I'm excited for whatever the future holds. For anyone reading this who's been through something very similar, I want to say this, it gets better. There will be dark days and you'll question everything, but you'll come out the other side stronger and wiser. Don't settle for less than you deserve and never let anyone make you feel like you're not enough. You are enough and you'll find the happiness and peace you deserve. Next story. My nephew's been hurting his little brother for years now my sister wants Maine to babysit them both. My older sister has two sons with her husband. Harley is 10, and Everest is 5. I'm 19 and female. Ever since Everest was born, there have been issues with Harley not liking his brother. He tried to give him away all the time after Everest was born. He'd tell his parents to take his brother back and forget about him. He even tried to leave him outside. He would scream whenever anyone tried to get him to interact with his brother or pose for a photo. In all the early family photos, Harley is trying to get out of them. And in the ones of him and Everest, he was mostly held in place because he would get up and leave. I expressed concerns before, and so did my grandparents, who lived with my parents and me at the time. My sister and her husband said they were getting Harley some help and that he'd just need time to adjust. But he never did adjust. He doesn't want to be around Everest. He rejects him repeatedly, ignores him, and yells at him when he asks him to play or for a hug. Everest gets so upset when his brother gets mad at him and he also gets upset when his brother is there but won't talk to him. Sometimes, Harley will not talk to him at all in a day. I've seen it before. I've also witnessed Harley try to lock Everest out and do all kinds of other things. I brought it up again more recently, and I was told all siblings bicker and sometimes they are close. Harley has told me before that he doesn't ever play with his brother, doesn't ever want to be in the same room as him and will never like him. I asked him why, and he just says because he doesn't have to and doesn't care. He also rejects any attempt from me or my grandparents to get them to spend time together with us. So, with all of this known, I was asked to start babysitting on Thursdays and Fridays after school for the boys. I have an online store where I sell stuff and set my own hours, so I could help. I've helped friends before and cleared my schedule for it. My sister wanted me to do that for them, but I said no. She asked me why and told me she'd pay me more. She started off with how much they'd pay when she asked, but I said it still wouldn't work for me. She told me she could really do with my help. I told her it's not going to happen because I don't want to deal with her ignoring Harley's problem, which would be most obvious if I were to babysit regularly. She told me I have no right to judge and that, as someone who is practically a kid, I should stay out of someone else's parenting. Comment NTA your sister asked, and you said no. She wanted to know why you said no and you told her how you felt, but she didn't like what you said. Her not liking what you said doesn't make you in a hole. It seems like Harley has a lot of issues. I don't blame you for not wanting to get in the middle of that. Someone who is practically a kid obviously doesn't have the skills needed to navigate that minefield. I'm being snarky, but until Harley's issues are addressed, your sister is going to have a hard time finding a babysitter for her boys. I really hope she's getting Harley the help he needs. It's a lot easier to work on these issues now. As he gets older, it will just get harder. NTA, she can pay someone else to be liable for any accidents that might occur between the kids while the parents are away. She makes it sound like no one else can parent her children. That means the babysitter has no power when dealing with issues. What is she expecting? Oh look, Harley left the door open intentionally while you were in the bathroom, and Everest is now wandering out on the road. But hey, you'll pay to watch them, right? What if Harley decides to bully Everest at every opportunity? Push him down the stairs. You can't tell him no. You're not allowed to do that. But guess who has to assume all those consequences? Yep, you would. NTI, I feel like parents forget that siblings can be abusive too. Harley is literally abusing his brother, and they aren't really doing anything to help it. If they were, then this wouldn't still be as severe as it is. I would seriously bring up these concerns with her because Everest is going to be messed up when he gets older. All he knows is that his brother hates him and is always mean to him. 
and he basically gets a free pass. If I ever treated my sibling that way, I would be punished for everything I did and sent to a therapist until I realized that I'm no longer an only child. These issues are serious and honestly are signs of possible bad events to come. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.